Okay, let's dive into second species counterpoint here. Now, what's new in second species counterpoint? There's really kind of only one big thing that's different between first and second species, but that one thing brings with it a whole host of complications. So, everything we know about first species counterpoint uh, carries through to second species counterpoint. So everything, all the rules that we know still hold true. The main difference is that for every note in the contus firmus, let me just put a couple notes of a contus firmus down. Oops. Do that. So if that's our contus firmus, which is usually written in whole notes, in second species, we're going to write two notes. So it's always a two to one relationship. Okay. So that's the kind of one big thing. Oh, I guess I should maybe finish that out. So in first species counterpoint, every note in the contus firmus had another note that went with it, right? So it was always a one-to-one. -one. In second species, we're going to have two-to-one. We're going to write two notes for every one note in the contus firmus. Right? That sounds simple, right? Like all we're going to do is double up on our notes and everything will be fine. Well, not quite. Um, because of this, we now have a lot more things that can go wrong and a lot more options. We have increased places that we can make a parallel fifth or octave. We also have the ability now to use passing tones, meaning tones not in the chord. So check this out. Here's what basically happens. Because we're doing two notes, let's look at this note for a second. This note has to make sense between here and here and here. So the relationship here has to work between the notes that come before it and after it. Also, between the note that's sounding underneath it and the note that's sounding next. So we can't have parallels, hidden or otherwise, happening there. So things get a bit more complicated because of all of these things that are happening around it, right? So sometimes we have passing tones. We have a couple new intervals that can happen. Um, before, in first species counterpoint, we would never use the interval of a second, right? Um, like B flat to C. We would never let that happen um, in first species counterpoint. But in second, we can call this a passing tone on its way here, and that interval of a second can be allowed, right? And then we land here on a sixth, and that's okay. I have another one here, a C to a D, and that can be allowed if we can call this a passing tone. So we're going to talk more about those passing tones shortly. So we have a whole new kind of uh, list of terms that come up because of these new complications that arise from the two-to-one relationship. So let's start off first um, by talking about metric accents and diminutions. This is something that we haven't seen before because it never really came up um, in first species counterpoint because all notes were one-to-one. -one. Now we have a kind of a hierarchy of notes happening. Um, which is what metric accents talks about. So let's jump to a new video and then we'll talk about that.